part of a movement. Right now, it, there is a movement going on with women's boxing, just boxing in general, and just women empowerment. And the fact that I'm able to be a part of that and I made history, say I can do this regardless of gender. Mm -hmm. I'm beating boys. No so way. I made my statement. You were boxing boys. Yeah, I still do. They hitting, hitting. They better, because mm. I'm hitting, hitting. Who would you want alongside with you? Yeah, so my next fight's in New York, so it only makes sense to have Cardi B. What? T tomorrow, okay? D is it set? Not yet. Cardi, <laughs> I'll set. Woo, woo. <laughs>
Yeah, you know, everything's about balance. And because we know that balance is important inside the ring, it's mm-hmm. also important outside the ring. But I'm able just to manage both. You know, I love being a woman. I love dressing up. I love being in my feminine energy. But then I also like being in my dog, yeah. being in the ring, putting some work on somebody and really just being confident in that. That's what builds my confidence Right. in that. So here we are on set in Atlanta, Georgia, um, Funky Friday Studios. And just look around. Like, we got belts, like, everywhere. And I told them to hang them motherfuckers up on, <laughs> on, on the things, like, like chandeliers. Like, what do, you, what do you think about when you see that? And we're chasing one more belt as mm-hmm. well. But at the same time, like, right now where you are, <clears throat> where do you, like, how does it feel? Man, it's it's an unbelievable feeling. Like I'm still trying to understand what that feeling is because I worked so hard to get to this moment. I love my belts, but I also know that these are just material things. Mm-hmm. For me, it's legacy. It's it's how I'm performing in the ring. It's what people are remembering as well. But it's a great feeling because I put the work in. I have my I have the work ethic to do so. Yeah. And I know that the work is never done. So Absolutely. So, you know, with that with that being said, now, the training regiment, and I really growing up, I idolized. Still to this day, I do too. Uh, Floyd Mayweather, right? One of my one of my biggest idols to date has been Muhammad Ali, and it wasn't anything that they did in the ring that made me idolize them. It was their belief. It was their it was their wit. It was their just their persona, it was the it was the character, but also, you know, the purpose and drive. And similar to when I see you, it's like when 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 the world seen you, and I was like, man, who the f- f- I'm speaking freely. I have a girl, so she could respect, you know, just fine. Like I said, who the fuck is this badass motherfucker <laughs> on TV with these fucking buffs on? About to fight. Why the fuck she fight? It's almost like every dude has a has an epiphany, you know what I'm saying, when he goes into a strip club. Not comparing you to a stripper, but I'm just, just stay with me now. You have to really eyeball somebody and say, like, well, what you doing in here? When I seen you on TV, I was like, bro, what the fuck is she doing boxing? Can she box? Man, she too bad to get her ass knocked out now. Nah. So that's even the more reason why I was like, man, let me tune in to this motherfucker. Oh, oh, she got hands, hands, and she backing that shit up. You know what I'm saying? Like, how do you, like, where are we at with that, with that bravado, with the culture behind you? You know, you say you're from Detroit. It looked like you're from Detroit, and you standing on that shit. Like, how, like how, how does that feel? It feels dope. I, I love that I'm in this position to do so, right? And like you mentioned, a lot of people didn't know up until like this last fight. Like, who is this girl? Yeah. She looked good, but can she fight? Yeah. And ain't nothing like backing your words up mm. and really just putting somebody down. Mm. So throughout throughout that whole time, like you was you was John a lot. You know what I'm saying? And I think you put the world on notice. But a lot of times, I often, you know, from an athlete's perspective, I prefer boxing than um UFC, but it's both combat sports. The thing that I see really, the entrance, walking up into the weigh-ins, and I can see in a person's eyes if that moment's too big for them. There's no time in this last fight where I just felt like, oh, I, th- I think she ended over her head, you know what I'm saying? Round by round, Opportunity after opportunity, it was just like, okay, cool, she's settling, she's settling in. But even then, as a fighter, is this all a facade? How do we get prepared for, or how do we tell ourselves throughout through it all, like, this is my moment? Yeah, it all comes down to self. Like, I really got to believe in my abilities and what I'm doing, right? Mm-hmm. And so... Going into a fight like that at that magnitude, it's like you either got it or you don't. Mm -hmm. You either train for it or you didn't. And I prepare myself well for this moment. And so it's just about standing in that that moment and believing in that. And when you believe in that, like true 
wholeheartedly, mm-hmm. it's a different animal. Of course. It's, it's, it's an internal feeling. And I experienced that when I first won my title mm-hmm. and then this fight when I became unified. So it's, it's just been dope. Yeah. So e- even though, you know, through it, this whole process of evolving as a, as a woman in this industry that's dominated by men, how have you been able to, you know, really kind of strategically plan yourself or really the business side of boxing? You know what I'm saying? Even when we were on the phone leading up into, you know, this interview ha- actually happening, I'm saying to myself, I'm like, damn, I didn't know that. Damn, the motherfuckers really be, you know, getting blackballed like that. But, you know, for you realizing as a young eight, uh, eight-year-old girl that just have a dollar in a dream, and then when you're thrusted into the limelight, what's the difference? Like, what's something that you knew or didn't know about this sport that you know now and then you just walk cautious with? Something that I did know is that my hard work was going to pay off, regardless of what that looked like. I was told you're never going to make no money in women's boxing. They're, they don't care about women's boxing. Like, you might as well go do something else. I'm like, listen, I put the work in every day right. until I got a phone call. You know, even when I didn't have a fight, I was in the gym 24-7 because I'm like, my this this going to pay off sooner or later. And that's exactly what happened when I got, you know, my call to fight for the world title. Mm-hmm. I was prepared, but I knew that day was coming because I didn't have the promoter, the manager, the money, the TV, all that. I just had just work ethic and hard work to really just put in until it was time. Right. So right now, where you are right now, we seeing some residual income or we seeing a lot of residual income. Right. For the for the inspired boxer that sees this, what would you tell him or her? The the road to the top looks like like how long were we doing this without no no money being inserted in that Wells Fargo Chase, you know, truest account? Listen. <clears throat> First of all, it's lonely. You by yourself. Like boxing is just a one man sport, right? You just for yourself, to, by yourself. And the money comes. You know, in my mind, I'm like, you know, let me just get in the ring. Let me fight. Let me build my record. Let me let me get in there so people can see me. The money's going to come. And I got my million dollar payday mm. when I beat Oh Girl in London. So, right. and it just builds from that, you know. And I just knew once I had that opportunity, the platform, we were able to take advantage of that, and that's exactly what happened. But even then, like when you start seeing, like from this point forward, it's real checks coming in. Mm-hmm. If you do what you're supposed to do, you would never go broke again. Exactly. Right. That's a powerful feeling, though. That's a responsibility. That can you keep it up? Absolutely. But I think it was Mike Tyson who said. It's not the person who needs motivation that's sleeping on the floor. The person who really needs motivation is the dude that's walking downstairs in his silk pajamas. You know what I'm saying? Like when all of a sudden Cartier reaches out and say, listen, this is your own Alicia's collection of Cartier, boom. And then all of a sudden you got this this, uh, person comes out, this, that, the third, all these, you know, money opportunities knocking. And that drive does get affected. How are you able to, you know, kind of stay stern? Who's that person in your life that keeps you, you know, on a straight and narrow? I would say myself. I'm I'm in tune with myself and my relationship with God. Mm. So praying, journaling, understanding where I started from is so important. Understanding how long it took to get here to this moment mm-hmm. and just starting from the bottom. Like, I just relive that, like. We can never go broke. Right. We definitely got to be smart with our finances because you see in, in the sport of boxing, a lot of athletes, I mean, not even boxing, a lot of athletes go broke Correct. because of, there's no, they're not um, informed. And so I felt like I was able to take the back seat for a while and see everything mm-hmm. until I got to that moment. Okay, now I can move how I can move because I'm aware and I'm knowledgeable. Right. So, so with that being said, is there a training uh, difference when you're training for a fight versus training for just every day. Like right now, do we have a fight set? We do. Now, if we didn't have a fight set. 
I still be in the. I would still be doing the same thing. How long do we work out? Mm. Take me through a bomb ass. No <laughs> a bomb ass workout. You know what I'm saying? So boom. So if we if we're pertaining to camp, you know we're working out three times a day. Word. So mm hmm. Yep. Mm. Three times a take, day. Take me through it. So wake up five thirty run in the morning. Good distance run. We'll do a distance run. So three miles, four miles. Okay. And then boom, go home, eat, fuel up, take a nap, get back in the gym at 12 o'clock. Okay. Now we're sparring. So I fight 10 rounds, championship rounds. So depending on where we are in camp, I could be doing eight, I can do 10. So we spar and then we do mitts. Then we hit the bag. Then we jump rope. Might follow up with a run. And then go back, relax, rest, and then do like a, a small recovery workout. That could be swim. That could be a massage. Mm. That could be some stretching. Yeah. Um, and that's every day. That's every day. But I'm about to say to myself, like, fuck, like, Shit. <laughs> that's a lot. That's a lot of tension on your body. It is. You know what I'm saying? It and is. for people who don't know that, you don't understand the sacrifices. I have children that... They don't know any other way. Like I'm in a lot, I'm in the point of my life now where they're not used to seeing me this much. Mm -hmm. I love it. They love it too, but it's like, oh, is is things gonna change? Uh, hell, I don't even know. But whether children or not, you got cousins, you got you got brothers, you got sisters, you got family members, moms, dads, that you know, they are used to seeing you in a in a in a way that a lot of people aren't necessarily they don't they they don't have the luxury to just pull up on you you know let's go eat lunch you know what i'm saying no 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 i can't do that i got to go work out or i got to go spar i got to go you know recovery this down the third and the simple fact that you're able to balance that compartmentalize that is something that i always you know tip my hat off to any any athlete because everybody sees the saturday night fights you know what I'm saying? Everybody sees the weigh-ins. Everybody sees the knockout. And I just want to thank my mom, my, my trainer, da 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 But it's the behind-the-scenes work that motherfuckers don't see. You don't just wake up and get all this. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like It's it's really hard no, work. No, it's, it's, it's a lot. But it's so worth it with knowing that something comes from that. Like for instance, when I fought in London, the fight got canceled because the queen died, right? I had to go back into camp. I did another five weeks of camp. Mm. I was so overtrained and I'm like, I'm just ready to fight. Because you 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 work harder in your, in your training camp. The right. fight should be the fun part, right. the easy part, right? And so we went back for that extra five weeks, but it was so necessary and I'm like, I'm a gym rat anyways, yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So it was nothing to really get back in the gym. But it's when you have that lifestyle, when you make boxing a lifestyle, which I have since the age of eight, it, it shows. Yeah. There's no lacking. It does. So me being a um, fashionista, a person who really you know has an eye of fashion, what goes into your uh, decision to... Uh, change your trunks, change your boots. I'm wearing these glasses. I'm wearing this robe. I'm coming out to this music. I'm like, what? What's what's that process like? It's, that's the fun part, right? Mm -hmm. So, boxing's entertainment. We want to see the vest, the uniform, the shoes, the hair. I mean, it comes down to what I'm putting on my uniform, how my hair is getting braided, and all that. And I love that's like probably my favorite part to do. Mm. It's like, what colors am I doing next? Yeah. Shoes, hair. What affects it though? Like, what, what did, how do we decide on a, the ring song, the entrance song? It'd be the mood, it, for me. And how, be. and how, how soon do you have to get those things in? Mm, the day, like, probably three days before the fight. Okay. Yeah. So this time I did, I couldn't decide on one song, so I did three songs, mm. right? And that's my favorite part. Is a walkout. But the but two, just off of experiences of fights and hearing different boxers, you know, talk about uh I was fatigued, I was this. You hear the uh Wilder, uh Deontay Wilder, you know, talk about um uh, do you spend a lot of 
uh, time thinking about the entertainment and then it over it, it, it affects you or you psych yourself out or you so juice that when you get into the damn ring, it's like, damn, I, I don't got no legs. I'm, I'm cramping, you know, I'm not necessarily nervous, but shit, you one hit away from really being unconscious. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? How like with that, where's where's where does the line draw from taking the entertainment too much? Or is that even a thing? I don't I don't really think it's a thing. I think when it comes natural, you just go in with the flow of things, mm -hmm. right? I don't have to put too much emphasis on a on a walkout because I am that. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm yeah, that yeah. energy. I'm bringing that energy for myself and mm -hmm. the crowd's bringing that. So you only need to do so much because so, the fight is the entertainment. That is a fact. <clears throat> that is a fact. We've seen the likings of the Floyd Mayweathers have a whole Cirque du Soleil performance right before he comes out. You see um, boxers uh, bring out artists with them. They have a performance right there. Um, in the future, who would be an ideal artist who, like, I see it, you know, uh, Gervonta... Shout out to Javante, a uh, good friend of mine. Um, you know, he brings out the little babies. You know what I'm saying? The little dirks. Who would you want alongside with you? Yeah, so my next fight's in New York, so it only makes sense to have Cardi B. What? T tomorrow, okay? D is it set? Not yet. Cardi! <laughs> I'll set! Woo, woo, woo! That shouldn't be so motherfucking... So so lit. I mean, woman empowerment, mm -hmm. just like shit. Oh man, that'd be dope. That's next level shit. That's that's culture shit. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? When my daughters look at shit and they say, oh, yeah, mm -hmm. we can. You know what I'm saying? It ain't, you ain't, it's no more, oh, you hit like a girl. You play like a girl. Right. It's more of a uh empowerment to Shit, sweetheart, baby girl, queen, princess, motherfucker, you you that motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? And remind, first off, yourself that it is certain uh, stigmas, stereotypes, things that's out there, and they are what they are. Now, granted, what you may have gotten paid versus your, uh, your uh, world champion bout versus what another motherfucker or a, a male would get paid is different. That's the ongoing challenge that that we're doing or we're dealing with. You see what I'm saying? But you know, for you, man, I, I just want to keep encouraging you to not change. Like you are uniquely one of a kind, mm. and for you to have this platform, who knows? You know what I'm saying? What it would be like. I will have coaches all the time say, "Shit, act like you've been there." You know what I'm saying? When you score, I'm like, man, fuck that. I don't know if this is my last time scoring <laughs> shit. I need to motherfucking let everybody know shit. I'm in this bitch. Like, real talk. So even, even with that throughout training, like, what's that whisper in your own mind that you always remind yourself for motivation? Honestly, it's understanding my assignment, right? I'm part of a movement. Right mm -hmm. now, it, there is a movement going on with women's boxing, just boxing in general, and just women empowerment. And the fact that I'm able to be a part of that and I made history in my last fight in London, we did over 2.2 million views, mm. sold the fight. It was That's dope. And now young girls who are boxing and coming up, they have something to look at. I didn't have that growing up. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I seen Mike Tyson, I'm like, that's my favorite fighter, yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah. Right? So now we have, we have different fighters, different backgrounds, culture, all that. And so they're able to relate to that. And so I tell myself when I'm training, like, it's not it's not about you. Mm -hmm. It's really about someone being encouraged and that I'm able to motivate, right. you know, somebody. Because motivation goes a long way. Uh, uh, telling somebody something right. can carry them. But even what you have to also remind yourself, too, with, with status comes power. Heavy right. is the crown that, that 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 holds the head, right? Or you know what I mean? Two things for me. Um, when was that aha moment? You know what I'm saying? Where you was just like, oh shit. Or have you been starstruck yet? Um, no, but I would say my last fight. Like when people really do come up to me, like, oh, can we get a picture? Oh my gosh, it's you. I'm like, yeah, I'm just it's just me. Yeah, we yeah, can take yeah. a picture. Like I'm just 
really humble, like knowing to to be humble and and just understand that like I'm out here, but I'm you're you know. a big deal. And oftentimes, do you do you remind yourself that? Do you fit? Have you have you been able to process what you're embarking on? I would say not enough. Okay. I will say that I can be better with that, mm -hmm. but it just puts me in a setting that there's so much more for me to accomplish that I'm not there yet, and that so much there's so much more to show and for people to respect that I'm just like, yeah, I'm not satisfied. I'm never satisfied right. ever. So the um, and also just who have you met that you was just like, oh fuck, hey, I could text so and so right now <laughs> if I wanted to, but you know what I mean. We all have those type of moments. Who was it? Um, I think it was when I seen Canelo. Mm. You know, Canelo, he's a great in the sport, right? He has a. He, we know that he fought Floyd. Mm -hmm. That was his only loss, and just to see him transition into the sport and see him grow from a loss, right? Mm -hmm. I've had a loss, I know what that feels like. Right. So we we don't let a loss define us, mm -hmm. right? And so when I see him, I'm like, oh, that's dope. And he's so dope, like he's a great fighter. Yeah. So so we, we are talking about a combat sport. We're talking about a very physical sport, you know, whether it was sparring, whether it was actual fighting. When was that time when you really got dinged in the head? It's like, ooh, okay. You know what I mean, like, what does, how does that describe that feeling of, okay, I'm not okay, but I just got to make it to my corner. You know what I'm saying? Honestly, I never had that feeling. Mm. Never had that feeling. I would say maybe in sparring, okay. right, maybe in sparring, if a guy hit me hard, I'm like, okay, bet, I'm going to get that back. Yeah. But yeah, I never, I never had that feel, that feeling because... I just gotta stay on my shit. I gotta yeah. be sharp. But when do you know? I mean, from me, from my perspective, throwing a football where you know, like, okay, that's the, uh, that one's on the money, right? Mm -hmm. As a basketball player, I'm pretty sure Steph, similar to me, like when you shoot the three, it's like, oh, that's that's bread and butter right there. Mm -hmm. Boom. As you're, like, I describe boxing as chess, not to demonize or scrutinize or even say anything lesser than uh, UFC, um, but you're setting up a person. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When you know like, okay, <clears throat> I got her ass, bro. Like I know, like take me through, take yeah, well, us through. Let me explain to you. So say boom, that. we in London. They call me up like, hey, we got, a, we got a world title shot for you. Do you want the fight? I said, bet. It was late notice, but I'm like, I've been in the gym, I'm ready. Mm -hmm. Flew over there. She's the, she's the world champion over there, right? And first round coming out, nobody knows me. They're like, they don't know who I am. They're like, who is this girl? She confident as hell. Right. Like, we don't know her, blah, blah, blah. But I came out first round just sharp as fuck. Boom, throwing my jab. They're like, okay, see something different. I'm right, like, right, duh, right. right? And so, you know, first round goes by, second round, third round. Um, you know, my, my coach is like, I need you, don't just throw the rock. You don't got to launch it, just throw it. Cause I got natural power, mm -hmm. right? So I'm, I'm learning my power. He was like, just, just throw, throw the right hand. I'm like, okay. Fourth round comes and I'm, I'm waiting. I'm waiting and she's coming in. I threw my right hand, boom, hit her right on the fucking button. And I just felt all this power like generate from my freaking feet all yeah. the way to my right hand. I'm like, damn, like I say, damn in my head, yeah. boom, hit her. She sleep on her feet, mm. like not like no one's ever seen someone get knocked out on their feet. So just like any fighter, you got to finish them, right? Right. So I come in with the hook, boom. Yeah. And that that's what woke her up. But the ref, good thing for the ref, he he's seen that and mm. stopped it automatically. Right. But that so, was right on the button. Man, I'm 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 there in the ring too. I'm <laughs> over here like, damn. Okay. Wake your ass. No, go to what? what? Man, that was and listen, when when you hit her, when I hit her and it was over, that was like the best feeling because I had, I tell people winning my first world title was like I was swimming underwater for a long time, mm. waiting to come up for a fresh of breath air or a fresh a, a breath, breath of fresh, fresh air. air. And so when it was over, I'm like, fuck, man, I did it. Yeah. I fucking did it. And it was like the best feeling in the world. Man, that's dope. It's like, do y'all talk? 
in like, the ring? In the ring. Yeah. I'm yeah. like. My, my last fight, I'm like, yeah, bitch. Oh, yeah. You feel that? Uh-huh. Yeah, okay. What? Well, I, was talking, I was talking shit because I was, if you seen the third round, uh -huh. I was talking shit. How much I, of it, how much of talking shit, because this is, it's two, it's two elements about talking shit. Number one, you're talking shit to keep you engaged. Mm -hmm. I'm that shit talker. I'm not talking, like, I can say, man, fuck you. But I'm looking at you. I'm not talking to you. Right. I'm just like, I'm keeping myself engaged mm -hmm. because I know I can veer off. The excitement and the coaches who knew me knew Cam is able to stay engaged by bringing a comedic like relief to it. That's how he stays engaged. Everybody's not able to do that. Right. So in pregame, you know, everybody's just walking around or they stretching. I was the jumping around like, okay, boom, big visualization mm -hmm. person. And the second is really to intimidate the opponent. Where are you with, you know, your 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 differential, differential um shit talking tactics? I mean, I would say it's the same. It's all about being in control, obviously. Just like you said, it's, it's keeping me focused. Mm -hmm. And it's also intimidating. Knowing you can't come in on my porch, you can't just come in because mm -hmm. I'm about to hit you with this jab or I'm about to hit you with this right hand. So mm -hmm. it just keeps me where I need to be. Right. I don't do it all the time, though, because you know, you're know you constantly thinking. It's chess, like you said, constantly thinking. But I do like to say a little here and there. It gets, it gets me riled mm -hmm. up. But like... So hometown is Michigan, mm -hmm. right? Do you see yourself? I'm actually from Fremont, Ohio. Charles Woodson, we there, but sorry. No, it's all good. But I would say, do you see a fight ever happening in your home state? Absolutely. Okay. I already, I already told him. Okay. I already told him, so they're like, yeah, we got you. Or you take the Floyd route, where it's like he's adopted a home of Las Vegas, you know what I'm saying? Or I feel like, you know, with Javante, he's been able to say, I seen him go to, you know, Baltimore, you know what I'm saying? Obviously, his hometown. Then I seen him come to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, shit, you get more love in Atlanta than, than you get anywhere else, you know? But at the same time, it's, you know... Anybody, you could be the villain, you could be whatever. You always want to go where you love. Right. Go where go where you love, not where, where, where you trying to be. Is I want to go where I'm appreciated. You feel exactly. me? So for you, as you navigate this whole um, this whole deal, like where would that idealistic place be? Where it's like, okay, I'm the queen on the throne. Y'all got to come to me. And where where would they be coming? Man, really anywhere. But like, if I had to choose, I would say New York, mm. Michigan, Vegas. Yeah. Like, I'm at the pivotal point where I'm able to really be in those settings where people are coming out because they want to see they want to see me fight. So, mm -hmm. shit, Atlanta. Like, I would love to fight here. Right. It's so it's needed. Mm -hmm. It's needed. Like, as a culture, we control so much, but we don't own shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it saddens me because we know what we have to do. We just don't always have the opportunity to do that. Right. Um, the richest man wins, or in this case, the richest woman wins. When you're when you're talking about production, when you're talking about um just everything behind the scenes of the fight. Um, and if you're able to to just say, you know what, we're gonna do it, or be able to like have the status to green light something, you know what I'm saying? Where would you see the sport of boxing go towards um, really implementing more women in power? Yeah, you know, I knew who I'm with now. I'm with Matchroom Boxing, Eddie Hearn, like I mentioned, he's put women's boxing on the map, mm -hmm. pays them. He puts them on television, main card, like he's been doing that. And so I'm with the the perfect promoter to really showcase that, to really elevate that. And so when you're able to do that and you're able to sell tickets and be a main event, like that's where we start. That's where we're able to really push forward. Right. How are you able to also cipher through really going back to putting you first, right? Very attractive woman in a male dominated sport all right, you able to talk and say, all right, 
Alicia, like, how do I get ground? Like, what do I do outside of the sport that comforts me? I would just say just the, the time you put into self, like. So not like, of course, like, oh, I'm a gym rat, oh, I'm on a run, oh. <laughs> like, oh, that shit cool. But where's the dude at? You know what I'm saying? Like, where's the, like, how would a guy be able to even shoot his shot? You see what I'm saying? Like, you, 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 you in the stratosphere that you're very intimidating to the normal guy. You're not about to sit up here and be walking through Whole Foods and be like, oh, shit, I just seen you on TV. Hey, what's going on? Like, <laughs> like describe, the, describe your ideal situation that would be for you. He must understand what, or this is how he has to act, what? Mm. First of all, you got to be confident. Mm -hmm. You got to be confident in who you are and how you speaking to me, first off. Okay. And then I would think it was just, I, I've, I read energies. So I feel like my energy, your energy is going to speak for itself, period. So I kind of really just go off of that and right. then it kind of, we'll see where that goes. So even with, I know, and this this just me putting on my big brother hat, my, you know what I'm saying, my friend hat. I know them DMs been jumping out the, the, the bando, you feel me? Jumping. <laughs> Dominique <laughs> Dolls, right? Like... What what gives access or clearance to, okay, I like him, or I'm going to entertain the thought. Take me through it. Mm. It'd be if I want to or not. Mm -hmm. You feel me? In, in my stage of life, I don't really don't got no time for that mm -hmm. because I'm married to the game. Like People are like, oh, you got a boyfriend, da, da, da. I'm married to the game. Like right. I really, it's, it's so critical for me right now to be focused and centered and grounded, right. I can I can get anybody I want. That's I fact. know that. So That's I'm just like, it'll come when it come, but if I wanted to. Yeah. Because you're in your dash right now. Say it again? You're in your dash. Mm. Like, you were unified world champion from 2021 in that dash. Just that little bit. You in that dash. Where you gotta, you do have to stay focused. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's not able to understand that. Right. So training at 2 a.m., training at 2 p.m., doing three a days, two a days, four a days, one hard one. It's like people that don't know won't know. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So for a person to come, hell, for the person that's in my life right now, she understands there's so many different segments of me. Mm hmm. All right. Now, what I what I present to her is something that's completely different than the world, and that's what makes us work. But for you and your situation, it may be completely different than me and my situation. You have to understand, like, okay, you know, babe, whatever, boo, ski, or you know, whatever. Y'all are able to say, all right, shit, um, I'm training right now. I can't talk, mm -hmm. or I'm going over here. I can't talk. Some like certain people get into this trends of like, damn, why you ain't call me? What you doing? The insecurities. Mm. Ooh, hit a nerve. The insecurities. <laughs> right? Cause it'd be real though. It'd be real. Um, everybody has insecurities, mm -hmm. right? And for me, with with confidence comes, you know, it, it speaks, right? right? And so I, I need someone who's just as confident who's not insecure, who understands the game, who understands who I am as a woman. When you understand who I am as a woman mm -hmm. outside the ring, right. then you understand that, okay, she she a businesswoman when she got to be. Right. She an athlete when she got to be. And she my girl when she, she got to be. Mm -hmm. like, there has to be balance between all those three right. or it's not going to work. So even then, it's like, you know, you, you, you are a very uh, complex person, but simple. Very simple. You know what I'm saying? Um, I was having a conversation with a person the other day, and they, the topic was really understanding or people around you really understanding how to serve. Mm -hmm. Because you're walking in, 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 in a phase of your life where money's no longer an issue. Right. You know what I'm saying? When we go to eat, I don't need you to pay for the food. When we're going out to wherever, I don't need you to pay. But I may need a extra wake up call that's free. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Making sure I'm on my shit. Yo, hey, 
motherfucker, you said you wanted to be motherfucking unified through 2000, <laughs> whatever. Mm -hmm. What are we doing? That's free. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people feel like they have to bring money to the table to be valued. And that's yeah. not the case. It's not the case. Um, when people move with a genuine heart, like you said, hey, you, you getting up to run, I'll run with you. Mm. Bet. I like that. Because you see my vision and it's not, it's nothing more. It's just right. genuine. So before we get out of here, you said something that I did want to talk about and will talk about vision. What's the vision for Bamba Clad, Baumgartner? The vision is, it's a spin. Like take, take, take. Take, take, you, take, take you me it. there. Take me there. Like in 2030. 2030? Yeah. Shoot, I'm thinking 23. Okay, come on. So boom, there. 23. We get this unified, we get this undisputed fight. Okay. Alicia Baumgartner is the undisputed world champion at 130, mm -hmm. right? Then we move up to 135. We fight the best girl at 135. We take her belt. Mm we become undisputed at 135. Mm. Walk in your trap and take over your trap. Shit. Exactly. Okay, easy. Boom. Conquer 35. Okay. Move up. It's all about skill at this moment. It's mm. skill and experience. I'm but like, but then too, then too, you have to understand, and it, it, it happens to every athlete. Coming into the game at a young age, you are spring chicken, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like you able to shit get hit a couple times and that shit don't bother you. But shit, I'm seeing now when I even train that, it's like when I work out, it takes me a couple more workouts to start really seeing that app coming <laughs> to fruition. Right. You know what I'm saying? So as you're getting older, what you thought you didn't know or what you thought you did know, now you're you're using a tenure as a weapon. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Being shook up being in these spotlight fights and i've seen it not personally but obviously from you know my vantage point of of looking at how floyd really intimidates his opponents when mm -hmm. i i mean they fucked way before they even do you ever hear a ding you know what i mean so for you it's like as you're going on this journey of greatness first off really identify um who the fuck you are, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But on top of that, you got to keep that vision and keep people around you that's going to keep pushing you to to a newer version of yourself. Absolutely. Because, I, <clears throat> go ahead. No, I, w I would agree. I'm Like I've said, I'm not satisfied, and I know growth is important. Mm -hmm. I'm always seeking growth, not outside the ring and in the ring, because mm -hmm. that, that makes me a better me, and I got these blinders on, literally. I don't see nobody else. I only see me and what I'm able to do. Right. And I don't think nobody can beat me. Mm. I don't think nobody can beat me. I believe in myself. I'm the only person that's gonna beat me is me. Right. I took my loss. I learned my lesson. I regroup. Took that. Boom. Now we. Now we here. Right. But and even even then, because like let's 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 keep it a buck. With that loss, you know, how how were you able to propel that and use that? As fuel, rather than it using you, like oh fuck, it was whatever. Man, listen, they ra they rose they raised her hand. I'm like, damn, mm. instant thought. Well, shit, I'm still gonna keep fighting. Mm -hmm. That was my instant thought. I wasn't gonna let that define me. And going into boxing in your pro career, you know, Mayweather had everybody like, I'm not losing my O. I'm about to go 50 and 0, mm -hmm. right? And I got my loss. I'm like, damn, well, that didn't work. But that's cool though. I'm gonna mm -hmm. keep pushing. You know, then you see the people who are for you at that time, who not. I had to make adjustments mm. and I did that. But that loss really like helped me along because I, t I fought this girl who was nine and one, right? I was five and oh. I'm like, I want a challenge. I want a step up fight. And that was the fight I took. And it was a close fight. It was a split decision. Right. I thought I pulled it. They gave it to her. I'm like, bad. That's cool. And now to this day, like that girl went on to be a, a two time world champion. But I was able to see. Because things were messed up outside of the ring, that's what that's what made my loss. For you, though. For me. Right. Okay. For me. And so I'm like, okay, cool. I got to see that. I know what I can do now mm -hmm. to be better moving forward. And I, I took that loss. Mm -hmm. This girl that I just beat, you know what a loss feels like right. now. Like, it's, it's cool. 
you can have O, you can you can lose your O in boxing. That's that's another thing people have to understand. Sports, you lose sometimes. But you, that's life. That's life. That's right. life. You lose your O in life, but at the same time, it does not define who you are and what what you are. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and I love that. I love that for you, motherfuckers. If you ain't tapped in now, you should be Alicia the Bomb, Bomb Gardner. Be on notice if you ain't already, and you got the culture behind you. I'm excited just to just to know you now in a, in a way, and really see your growth, mm -hmm. because we need you to win, like real shit. We can probably say a couple, like on one hand, how many black female boxers that held their own, but really. With 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 an arm, hmm. we can name the ones that have brought beauty to the sport, unapologeticness to the sport. Bring that Conor McGregor to the sport, Floyd Mayweather, Mike Tyson, you know what I'm saying, to the sport. Layla Ali to the sport, you know what I'm saying? And really, you know what I'm saying, be able to back that shit up. No juvenile. Ah! Hey man, listen, as we get out of here, we're gonna do this in unison. We're gonna start with this camera right here, and then we're gonna go to this camera right here, and then we're gonna finish with that camera right there. One finger, there we go. One pinky, one thumb, one love. You did! Yeah. <laughs>